Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Norfolk. We're on a uh, road trip, or just a family trip, really, to deliver some Christmas presents to uh, family over in Stilton, Peterborough. And, uh, yeah, it's another one of those ones where it always seems to be tight on range in whatever car we go in, because we've got two small uh, battery cars. Uh, 96 miles to 100 miles, according to all the different maps I've looked at, is uh, the route we're taking. And the car said 121 mile range. It sounds all fine, doesn't it? But I know that 121 mile range was based on getting 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour yesterday going into the city for a very short 10 mile trip, doing about 25 maybe even less miles per hour average so 3.7 is very optimistic 32 kilowatt hour usable battery 96 miles that divides nice and easily that is three miles per kilowatt hour is what we need and right at the moment actually it's looking okay the screen is showing 3.4 we started out um, at 2.9 when we were just leaving home we have preconditioned the car to 19 C it's set to 19 now haven't got air conditioning on yet but I think we're gonna have that on later um, to make sure we don't get any mist in the car and Susan's driving so there's all the details morning Susan <laughs> um, we've already done um, well, I don't know how many miles we've already done. How many does it say? Eight miles, and we've gone down ten already. So the range is dropping faster than the miles we're travelling, which is to be expected. I'm expecting it to be quite close, but I wonder how close it's going to be. This is our first test in the e-golf to see how good it is in the winter, in colder conditions, damper conditions, those sort of things, because this does not have a heat pump. If only it did. Um, yet. Yeah the right car the right model with a heat pump wasn't available and uh, yeah they're an expensive option as well I think they're over 800 pounds aren't they um, or they were with the e-golf so a lot of people wouldn't have added it because they wouldn't have understood what they were getting for it especially if it was a lease car I guess anyway the reason for the video isn't just the trip the reason for the video is I thought um, we could do a little bit of a video with Susan and myself discussing which is better, the e-golf or the mini. Because there's lots of different attributes that the two cars are better at than each other. And it's worth going through the list to work out, um, now that we've owned the e-golf and the mini for some time, which car is better in which aspects. So if you're thinking about either an e-golf or a mini, you might not be considering the choice between the two, but if you're considering either, then you can listen to the positives and the negatives that we come up with, with e for each. So anyway, um, I'll start off with a few and see if Susan chips in what she thinks is better. Let's start with the obvious one, range. Which is better? Well, actually, that's not an easy one because the Mini is slightly more efficient. The Golf is still quite efficient, but has a 32 kilowatt hour usable battery, where the Mini has 28.9 kilowatt hours. So I think they sort of cancel each other out. Um, the Mini, I know we have driven 170 miles in it in peak summer conditions, and we haven't managed that in the Golf yet, but I don't think we've done the same journey. Um, I do notice that the Mini is often 10% better efficiency than the e-Golf, but again, it's got a 10% bigger battery, so it does sort of even out. I suspect they're very, very even, but I'm gonna call it that the Golf wins because the Golf's GOM tells you that you have enough range, where the Mini's GOM tells you that you never have enough range. So because of that, I think the Golf wins on range. Speed, well, the Mini's faster, no doubt about that, 0 to 60, and it's more fun to drive. But the Golf wins because it's bigger and more comfortable. What else do we have on the cars? Um, interior, which is the more comfortable? I guess the Golf is more comfortable because it's more spacious, but actual seat-wise, what do you think, Susan? Which are the most comfortable seats? Golf. Oh, okay, Susan thinks the Golf. I sort of think... Actually, no, no, no. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll come back on that. Um, I think the, the Mini's seats are probably better because they're certainly yeah, the mini seats are gorgeous and they really are sporty and comfortable as well. So it's a close call, but I, I would say the mini wins. What about quality of interior? Which do you think is better? Uh, 
Mini is the winner for quality of interior, but it's a close call again. Um, the Golf is quite quite good and it's luxurious. Um, it's got some nice features to it. Satnav, though, if we talk about the Satnav and the media systems next, um, the Golf I think has a better Satnav screen, the one in built, and it also has Android Auto, where the Mini doesn't have Android Auto, it only has the Apple version of it, and the Satnav screen in there and the uh, resolution of it is not as good. And then, of course, the Mini one with uh, the Satnav, you said it, it takes some more off the range as well and frightens you. So the Golf wins on the media side of things, I think. But what about heating? We've just experienced that quite recently between the two. Susan, what's your opinion on the heating system between the two? Um, mini. Mini wins. It's got a heat pump, which um, we can get over four miles per kilowatt hour um, while the heating's on with air conditioning in this sort of conditions. So efficiency-wise and the heating-wise, the amount of heat and the amount of huff, the amount of air that can come out of it, uh, is better in the Mini. Yeah, technical term. Heated seats in both of them. Um, the Minis are actually a bit hotter, I think, than the Golfs. So the Minis are quite good, but I've also got a heated steering wheel in the Mini, and we don't have that in the Golf. I must admit, for a £250 option in the Mini, it is well, well worth it. I really wish we could have that on the e-Golf. And I'm going to start looking into aftermarket. Can we just plug in a different steering wheel with the heated element in it? Would that work? Can we do that? Anyone that knows um, what you can do in an e-Golf, can you swap the steering wheels and get a heated one? I'd love to know. So what else about the two cars? What is better? Regen. What about that? Well, I think the Mini is better because you have a lower regen and a higher regen option. On the Golf, all you have is no regen, i.e. coasting, or let's call it a medium regen. It's not very firm and very hard. So both are actually not very good. I don't think the Mini gets more than 50 kilowatts of regen, whereas the Kona Electric I had had over 100 when you were bombing along and put uh, regen in maximum. But the, the Golf's even worse, I think. So it, it's a comfortable car, and I think that lack of um, really harsh regen is something that Susan likes in the car. So in some respects, it's not a negative, but for one pedal driving, the Mini is actually better. Yeah, I do. Um, I use the brakes a lot less in the Mini to the Golf. Oh, the opposite. Oh, you use the brakes less in this. Right, okay. Well, there you go. It's a close call then, apparently. Maybe I'm just happy at driving this. Yeah. <laughs> Drivability, though, um, again, it's a close call depending on what you like. The Golf is fun and comfortable and leisurely. The Mini is exciting and dynamic and bumpy <laughs> and jars you a little bit more. So it's uh, it's horses for courses. Um, I prefer driving the Mini, even though it is a bit smaller and more closeted. But Susan prefers driving the Golf. Mini has a sunroof. Golf does not. Annoying things, while I've actually got the camera up here, annoying thing on the Golf is this bloody light up here, this green one. I'm going to have to block it out that when I'm driving, I don't know why, but it, it seems to distract me, so I'd like to get rid of that. The Golf has rear windows that you can control. Yes, the Mini's a two-door, the Golf's three, and you can put the rear windows down, so that is good. Um, what else is the differences between the car? The Golf has a ski hatch, so you can see the Yes, the ski hatch is actually quite a big benefit for us with Cracker. He really does like looking through. And it's nice for us to see that he's okay as well. So yeah, the ski hatch is great. What else have we got then? Um, the sport modes, the eco modes, etc. There's three modes on each. Um, but the mini is definitely more sportier and the eco mode is very effective. So I'd say based on the driving modes, the mini wins. The, the virtual engine sound, the VES noise that both cars make, I'd say the Golf is better because one, you can't hear it from the inside of the car where you can with the Mini, but two, the Golf one is, is less electronic and more like an actual car. And I find it quite a pleasant noise that it makes. And yet the Mini one's just a bit too artificial for my preference. It sounds more spaceshipy, which I know most electric cars do, and it's, it's sort of the trend for them. But the Golf one is actually really, really nice. I do like it. 
while we're looking at the steering wheel, um, the cruise control settings for active cruise control, which the Golf has and the Mini does not. We don't have active cruise control, just normal cruise control. Well, some of them, some of us never use that. Anyway. <laughs> Susan doesn't know how they work. Um, but the I, I don't know what oh, it is. E-Golf, E-Golf. Is it an E-Golf? Yeah. There you go. 70 wrench, that's a really new one. That's the same as us then. No, we're a 20. Yeah, that's the same as that. That's 70. I know, so that's 20. <laughs> same, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll get you. <laughs> it's not the same, it's 70. <laughs> what were we talking about before you told me? Oh, the active cruise control. Yeah, it's got the same buttons for setting and changing the cruise control by one mile an hour or five miles an hour and start, stop, cancel, resume. It's got all the same things and the same sort of buttons, but for some reason, I struggle to get it right on the Golf, and yet I find the Mini more intuitive. So I'm not sure whether that's I'm just really used to the Mini and there's a subtle difference between them and hence I can't quite get it right on the Golf, or whether it is just a bit more awkward. I do find the data display on the Golf not so good as the Mini and the controls for changing it. Again, they're more intuitive on the Mini. They're a little harder to find on the, on the Golf and to get the right display on the screen takes more button pushes. And again, I suppose it's all to do with the media system, that you know, the media system's not quite as good with the Golf. This dynamic digital display that we have on this uh, model of the Golf is brilliant, that we can have the sat-nav showing in the middle of the screen with those different dials, and we can choose what we have in there, whether it's economy or compass or sat-nav instructions or driving data. You, you can have lots of different things in there. So that's a benefit, it's more configurable. And then also it's a benefit here with the touch sensitive side of things. You can change what's on this media screen um, more easily and have the sat nav go from this media screen over into the middle of um, the screen with Susan, which we can, we can just do. Just press the map button here and it goes over onto Susan's screen. Shame we can't have it on both though. I do like the gesture controls where you touch the screen and, uh, or you could go to touch the screen and it moves before you actually get there so you, you do know what's on the screen. I do like that. One of the most annoying things with the Golf though is the voice controls. It, it does not seem easily possible to use the voice controls to set sat nav. Um, it's an awkward thing that it wants to know the city, then it wants to know the road, and then it wants to know something else, and you have to use a certain syntax to get there. The Mini is much more intuitive, you can just speak to it, and it will navigate you more often than not to the right address that you say. Um, so I do like that more. The Mini also has Alexa integration, so I can control some of the house devices, unbelievably, from the car, so I could turn on the outside lights before I get home, that sort of thing. Uh, the Golf doesn't have any facilities like that. Well, we're just clearing Norwich now, heading out on the A47. What a thick day for your lights on, foggy. And we're up to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. I am... I'm quite mystified as to how that's possible when I only got 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour driving into the city. Is it Susan's magic that she just does better than me? Um, the heating's on the same. Ah, oh, we haven't got air conditioning on. Let's turn the air conditioning on and see whether that um, kills the range slightly because I did have that on yesterday. Anyway, uh, the plan for getting there is to see what the miles per kilowatt hour is by the time we get to Necton near Swaffham, which is about a third of the way into the journey. And we'll either stop there or at Kings Lynn if it looks like we're going to need a charge. But if we're comfortably over three miles per kilowatt hour, which we are now, I think we just plod on and um, charge when we get there. My daughter's got a Kia e Nero with a Zappi charger and uh, the space is vacant waiting for us when we get there. So uh, nice reliable charger, none of this stopping at a BP pulse etc. Anyway back to the comparison, Mini versus Golf. Um, this e-Golf was £27,000. Um, I think we overpaid for it to be honest, I think it's probably worth more like £25,000. 
but to get this spec with the leather interior, the dynamic dash, the nice wheels, and, and this colour, it's not just white, it's an orcs white, so a nice pearlescent colour. Um, we haven't seen another one in this spec, so it was quite unique, and uh, I think we had to pay a bit of money to get it. Anyway, but the Mini cost us 32500 nearly 33. Um Yes, it's a little bit newer, but not by much now. Just a year difference between the two, I think. So value for money, which is better? I'd have to say this e-golf. Buying a used e-golf like this. How many miles did this have on it, Susan, when we uh, uh, seven, put it? 7,000 7, miles, I think. It only had five, actually. I'm not sure if it did have seven. I suppose we've only had it a couple of months, haven't we? Yeah. Since August. Yeah, so if we bought this, it was a 20 reg with only 7,000 miles on it. It still feels tight and still feels new. Um, so to have saved, you know, five grand over buying a brand new Mini, I think buying this used Golf is a very, very good option. Will it depreciate more or less? Well, since we overpaid for it slightly, I, I suspect, actually, um, <laughs> this e-golf is going to depreciate worse than the brand new Mini. But um, we shall see. I'll keep an eye on the price and see what happens. What other sort of things do we need to consider, Susan, to consider which is cut better in what aspects? Mirrors, visibility out of the car, what do you think? Not much to choose between them then really uh, but which one would you choose which is the winner for visibility out of the car um, they're both they're both very similar um, okay i find the golf bear because you can actually see the traffic lights the uh, windscreen is much lower on the mini so as you pull up to a traffic light you can't see above yeah i suppose it's, it's a, um, but you're just taking things overall, you'd have to bring other factors into it to wonder yeah. which one you prefer because there's not much in it. We are starting to condensate on one of the back windows. Uh, side here. Yeah, so. And yet we've got air conditioning on. Let's turn the fan that's speed. What's brought it on. Let's turn the fan speed up. Yeah, just in the corner there as well, a little bit of condensation forming. Well, I don't think we need to do anything like boot space comparisons because obviously the Golf's a bigger car, so we don't really have to worry about that. But one of the things that bugs me about the Golf compared to the Mini is the door openings. You know when you open the door and there are a couple of click points where the door holds so that if you're a granny getting out of your car, then uh, the door's not going to swing in the wind and bash the poor guy next to you that's rather concerned about his brand new car. You know the sort of thing. Um, the Golf has two of them. One's really tight and very narrow not easy to get out of and the other one is basically open 90 degrees or it feels like it there's no decent level of hold for when you're getting in and out of a car parking space etc out of the car um, the mini has more appropriate click points on holding the door now that does bug me because yeah I, I, I do hate the idea of bashing the doors on things as you're getting out um, so that for me is one of the bugbears of the golf but such such a tiny thing such a tiny thing. So I think I'll leave it there. Um, we are still doing 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That is absolutely excellent. Let's have a look over. We're averaging 40 miles an hour, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. We're going to get there comfortably like that, so I'm very, very pleased with that. 96 miles of range, it says, and how many miles do we have to go, Susan? 68 miles, I think the sat-nav says. 
to go. And the temperature's gone down. It's only six degrees now. Anyway, I'll sign off. Thanks for watching and listening. Um, I'll p try and do a little bit of video at the end to see what we arrive with, if I remember. But if I don't, thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos and experiences in the Golf, the Mini, solar panels, and all those great things. <laughs> see you again soon. Bye for now. What are you laughing at? Those great things. Yeah, I know they are. They are great oh. things, aren't they? The adventures of Nigel. Yeah, I know. For all you sad kids out there, they are great things, aren't they? Batteries, solar panels and electric cars. <laughs> the joys of our life. We don't have to buy stereo and um, home computers anymore. <laughs> or, electric <gadgets. laughs> or electric gadgets. What we need is more data. More data. Anyway, I'm still recording. <laughs> well, bye for now. And what about the trip details then? Well, we managed the 94 miles, quite uneventful. 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, not too bad. 94 miles, 15 miles of range left indicated on the car. That's a 109 mile range when we started with 121. Not too bad with the heater on, the air conditioning on, um, and uh, quite cold, damp conditions. I would have hoped for a little bit more. But uh, not too bad. Anyway, we got to the destination, plugged into my daughter's Zappy 2 charger and added 23 kilowatt hours of energy. That gave us 103 miles of indicated range, plenty to get home. I think that was about 84, 85% indicated. Not quite sure of the exact percentage, but anyway, 103 miles to go. We knew we didn't need to charge, so we set off. Problem was, though, on the way back, the car was indicating that we only had five or six miles spare, and yet we did 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour in the end, and only had 12 miles left. So 103 miles, and we did 94, and we had 12 left. That's only 106. Three miles more range than what was indicated, and yet we had 20% better efficiency. Something very, very fishy going on there. There must have been more energy in reserve somewhere, but it wasn't letting us see it. Weirdly, when we charged the car overnight, the moment we plugged the car in at 2.30 in the morning, it didn't receive any energy, but it jumped up 6%. So there seemed to be 6% spare energy that we weren't able to see on our journey, but magically appeared later. Not quite sure what that was about. Anyway, uh, we made it there and back, and uh, we had range to spare, but it did, um, it did make us think turn the heater off on the way back, when it only gave us five or six miles spare contingency. And gotta say, the e-golf's heater is not very good.